Welcome back. Cybersecurity awareness is actively being mindful of cybersecurity in day-to-day -day situations. Being aware of the dangers of browsing the web, checking email and interacting online are all components of cybersecurity awareness. Now, for more on this, we're joined by Dr. Jabum Mtsueni, who's the head of Cyber and Information Security Center at the CSIR. Dr. Mtsueni, thank you so much for your time and for joining us this evening. Good evening, Katleho, and uh, thank you for inviting us. It's an absolute pleasure. We're talking cybersecurity. Just talk to us, what's the prevalence of cyber theft in South Africa? You know, cyber theft in, in South Africa is, 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 is quite uh, high uh, because obviously we've got a number of people who are online these days, almost 40 million South Africans, you know, interact with internet. Social media is about 26 million. And what we see, for example, from the work that we do is like cyber crime has a big financial impact. You know, uh, Interpol tells us that almost about four uh, million US dollars, a uh, billion rather, in terms of um, the impact that we have. In South Africa, when we sort of do our work, we find that it, it, it differs. But cyber crimes, if you just look at ransomware attacks, you know, where criminals go into organization and they to do cyber attacks and they want to ransom them, mm. it can even grow up to even 93 billion sure. uh, of, of amount that is, is lost. Obviously, there are different studies uh, in this regard, but the, 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 the impact is quite high. Mm. And the impact on individuals, because when we think of cyber crime, we think of corporates and the, the ransom that you speak of, but when it comes to you and I, how, how much of a problem is that? Uh, what, what is interesting is that when we do our work, we say cyber crime does not discriminate. Right, it impacts uh, the individuals, it impacts organizations, it impacts the poor, it impacts the rich. So, and, and, and with users like me and you, the, the main important aspect is, for example, issues of identity theft, mm -hmm. because as these companies are breached, our data gets stolen, so then people end up stealing our identity and then they commit fraud with our identities and various other you know, malicious activities you know, that, that they do with our data. Mm. So of course, having a strong word and just your multi-factor authentication, uh, do you think that a lot of people are aware and are educated enough in terms of how to prevent and, and safeguard themselves? Uh, I, I, I'm not according to our data and research. So we find that Organizations, for example, only about 32% of the organizations will um, teach or train their people on cybersecurity awareness. In Africa as a whole, digital literacy is a problem, right? That's number one. But mm. number two, uh, what we call cyber hygiene is also an issue where people do not behave according to best practices, for example, when they're online. And we see this, you know, in simple things such as when people interact on social media, what information they post, some of it which is personal, that is not supposed to be there. But over and above that, you know, when people interact with digital platforms such as, let's say, internet banking and the likes, the behavior is a little bit, you know, un un untoward, so to speak. And I can give a very simple example. Sometimes parents will share their passwords with their children or will mm. give the card, uh, you know, a bank card with their children. And that's not cyber hygiene because that can then lead to cyber criminals extracting that information and committing even other frauds. Mm. And of course, I mean, like you said, because we live in such a digital world, some of these things are, are things that a lot of parents especially won't even think of. I mean, just posting pictures of your children online um, for, for any various reasons, that alone could pose a, a cyber risk. How much of a correlation is there between cyber crimes and human trafficking? Look, there's always a, a big correlation. And, and the reason is cyber criminals, they always act on our psyche, you know, our psychology, and they tap on our emotions, right? So, for example, uh, it's like uh, w when they know that when our children start uh, school, uh, we will post, for example, uh, pictures of our children. They then use that information to study us, to understand, for example, how much resources we have. Mm -hmm. you, know, how, you know, if you look nowadays, there are these kidnappings that happen, yeah. uh, where people kidnap because they know that Katleho uh, has a lot of money, they kidnap your children because they know that you are going to be able to pay. So uh, c cyber criminals, they are always studying us and they are always checking what is it that we are posting in various platforms. On that point, maybe could you give us a typical profile of what a cyber criminal would be? I mean, you do say they study <coughs> your psyche. What else could be the telltale signs in terms of who they are? Now, you see, this is a very interesting question. And let me tell you, a cyber criminal is not like a guy who's wearing a hoodie. Like or we think of. Like we movies. think of. No, no. <laughs> cyber criminals are people like me and you, by the way, right? Because these are people we interact with on a daily basis. And we have seen it, for example, when you look at, let's say, 
business email compromise. These are people who will come to you selling a house. These are people who will come to you wearing a tie and wearing a suit, you know, wearing a makeup. So these are, are, are people who are going to be part of the family. And that is why we always say in cybersecurity, sometimes the insider threat is the most dangerous one because mm -hmm. these are the people sometimes we trust. These are the people we, we think they are not going to rob us. It's some people who are promising us jobs at, at, at other times and they are stealing our information. Certainly. So now talk to us about the technology that CSIR has, has developed um, in helping to identify especially the romantic scams and the identity theft. So CSIR works on a number of technologies. Of course, there might not be enough time for us, for, for us to do this, but, on, but, but online, I think it's, uh, you know, we do a lot of, of campaigns, for example, in terms of cyber security awareness toolkits that we use to enable people, for example, to identify some of these various scams, you know, whether it's a business email compromise, it's phishing attacks, social engineering, because we, we also believe that working on the cyber security culture is very, very important because it starts there. Mm. You know, in all of the cyber attacks that we see, the human element is still the weakest uh, link. So we try to, whatever technologies we build, we focus more on the human element because technology, we think, it's not the essence. The essence is how people behave. Mm. So just maybe some tips in terms of the most dangerous online behaviors and how people could change and be more aware of their movements so that they don't fall victim to such. I think one of the most critical aspects is to be conscious. You know, we call it cybersecurity consciousness because immediately when you think that you are um, a, a not uh, a, 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 a suspect in, 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 or a victim, we are not going to be a victim, you are going to have a problem. So we need to be conscious number one. But number two, people need to think before they click. Think before you give your information. You know, if everything is being rushed, you must know that that's, that's the problem. So we need to think about that. But over and above that, I think it's also important for people to follow the safe practices. And they, 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 these are preached on a daily basis. You know, passwords, management, do not share them. Just like we don't share our toothbrush. Don't share, you know, passwords. Don't share pin codes. But also change them on a regular basis because the digital space continuously evolves. And as it evolves, you know, criminals also find new ways uh, uh, to also, you know, trick us into giving them information. Mm. And don't save them on your phone. You, of course, of <laughs> course, don't save them on your phone because, you know, or don't write them on a piece of paper or right. on, your, on your screen because if you do that, then uh, it's like we are giving people the keys to your crown jewels and it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Sure. The more technology makes our lives a lot more easy, it also opens up to many more problems. Thank you so much, Dr. Mzweni, for your time this evening and for that enlightening conversation. That is Dr. Jabu Mzweni, head of the Cyber and Information Security Center at CSIR, speaking to us there about cybersecurity.